Hey guys and welcome back to another video. So in this one we'll be focusing on a complete topic walkthrough on bearings and this is for the GCSE and IGCC math syllabus. And guys, if you're just a general learner, trust me, check it out because this one's going to cover pretty much everything you need to know, how to do it, some exam examples and pretty much like just a general understanding of bearings, yeah? I definitely recommend it. But yeah guys, without further ado, let's jump straight in and just understand what's going on. So first things first, we're going to go through a definition here yeah, and understanding how to use bearings. So literally, when you start reading a bearings question, it's easy to freeze up. Now, where do we begin? So when you look at bearings, you always see something like the bearing of A from B. Now, I put these three points here. The best way to memorize this is to start with the word from. When you, when you see the word from from a question, it says find the words from X in the question. So let's have a look. When you see the word from, always highlight it like this so from B and that's where you start okay that's the first thing you should do the second step is to look for the word north so it says here at from X in other words from B draw a north line and sometimes it's already drawn so what it did here you start at point B and you just draw this north line up there just like they did from B draw a north line from B and then finally CW is clockwise you want to draw a clockwise angle from the north line to the line joining two points so from here all the way to here, so that's your north line, you just draw an angle over there. And that's it, that's pretty much all you do guys, this is literally how you calculate bearings. So quick recap, always find the word from wherever the letter is, if, it, if it's written. Sometimes they don't write from, they go straight into the question, but we're going to tackle that. Now, now that you understand the definition, let's do some examples guys here. Let's try and smash some past exam questions. So, let's do the first one. Now, it says here, the bearing of Z from Y is 115 degrees. Find the bearing of Y from Z. So, first things first, I always like to reread the question, just start from one sentence at a time. It says, the bearing of Z from Y. So, what we do is highlight the from Y bit. And what I do, I like to draw a point. And let's just call this one Y, yeah? And always draw the north line, as we did earlier. Now we know that the angle will be 115 degrees, so they told us. So if you think about it, if you can draw a clockwise angle from the north line, it has to be 115 degrees. We know a right angle is like this. That's 90 degrees. So that means that line should be a bit lower to be a bit bigger than 90 degrees. And this would be roughly 115 degrees. When you sketch things, guys, it doesn't have to necessarily be big, but it has to be kind of like obvious. So it has to be bigger than a right angle. And you can draw this end point, just call it a Z, yeah? So this is essentially the YZ line. Now the question is, find the bearing of Y from Z. So now we're going to look at from Z and draw a north line upwards. And now before we even answer the question, let's just go ahead and just notice a few facts here, yeah? You probably noticed that you've got two north lines and these two are parallel. It's very important that you work out this angle here before you work out the next angle, yeah? Now, when you've got two angles like this, we should know that these two angles are known as allied angles. And they add up to 180 degrees. So to work out this unknown angle, we could just do 180, take away 115. And that should give us about 65 degrees. Okay, so we know that angle is of 65. Now, to find the bearing of Y from Z, so remember, you start from Z and then you go clockwise. Now, this might look weird. You're going to go clockwise all the way until you hit the line there. That is the big angle you want. Now, if you ask yourself, what do all angles around a point add up to? Well, it always adds up to 360 degrees. So all you want to do is 360, take away 65, and you'll find out that this entire massive angle should be 295 degrees. And that's the answer. That is the bearing of Y from Z. Even though this is a grade 3 question, it's, a, it's very important that we know the basics, just to fully understand it, yeah? But that's it guys, this, this is part one done. Let's go to our second example, yeah? A ship sails 12 kilometers on a bearing of 60 degrees, then 15 kilometers on a bearing of 100 degrees. Okay, so let's map this out. So let's start, let's call our initial point X, like we did last time. We know it travels 12 kilometers on a bearing 60 degrees. So let's get our north line ready. We know 60 degrees is less than a right angle, so it shouldn't travel too far. So it should be something like that. This should be about 60 degrees, give or take. And that distance is 12, yeah? Then at this point, let's draw another north line. 
um, it travels 15 kilometers on a bearing of 100 degrees. So 100 degrees is more than a right angle. So if you do it clockwise, it should be going down. So let's label this length and then stop somewhere here. So what we can do, let's put some numbers in. This first distance was 12 kilometers. Next one was 15. And we've got some angles involved. We know this angle here is 100 degrees. And we can work out this angle on the left side. If you look at the, the left hand side, we've got a pair of allied angles. 60 plus this one should add up to 180. So this must be 120. Okay, it's important guys just to put as many, you know, fill up as much as you can as you go along. And if you really want to fill out the, the inside part, all angles around the point add up to 360. That means that, that means to make 360, you need another 140 degrees. So these three values add up to 360. Okay, cool. Now let's get back to where we were. So it says it then sails directly back to a starting position. Okay, so it's, this is more or less another triangle problem. Okay, cool. So we've got a couple of lengths. We've got 140 degrees here. We've got 12, we've got 15. And then wants to calculate this distance here. So this cosine problem. Now to do the cosine rule again, let's write the formula. It's always a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. The a's is always the focused angle and the length. So we've got 114 and it's matching pair x. That means the b and c are the red ones, 12 and 15. So we therefore have x squared equals 12 squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times 12 times 15 cos 140. So putting all of this into a calculator and then square rooting your answer, because remember you just want x, you should therefore get a distance of 25.4 kilometers. So that's it. That's the end of these questions. You know, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope these questions helped. Let me know if there's any other full topic walkthroughs you guys want me to cover. I've got a whole bunch of them already done. 3D Pythagoras, vectors, you name it, differentiation. I've got a bunch of topics. So if you want me to add any more that I'm missing, please let me know. And I'll publish it as soon as I can, guys. But yeah, other than that, I hope you guys have a lovely day and I'll see you next time.